Hello, so when I asked for suggestions about videos, one of the suggestions was what gear do I use for recording, what's in my PC, what peripherals do I use. So this video is all about my PC and the equipment I use. And rather than use this shaky video, I'm actually just going to use pictures of the items themselves. The heart of any PC are the motherboard, processor and memory. And I bought these in 2013, haven't changed them. The only thing I've done is doubled the amount of memory that's in my PC. I bought these as a bundle from Overclockers in the UK and really haven't changed them. The motherboard is an MSI X79A GD658D. Now the first thing to note is this is an X79 motherboard. So this is a previous generation. The new ones are X99, so I can't run the latest processors. If I do want to do an upgrade, I'm going to have to replace everything. Motherboard, memory and processor. My processor is an Intel Core i7-3820. So that's a four core processor. Now it came clocked at 4.4 GHz by overclockers. I've reduced that so it now runs between 3.6 and 4 GHz. I let the motherboard handle all the overclocking itself. When it wants to it can turn the processor up. When it doesn't need it, it can turn it back down again. Helps a lot with cooling and makes things last longer. The memory is Kingston HyperX Genesis. There's 16 GB in my PC. It came with four 2GB sticks when I bought the bundle and I bought another four 2GB sticks to put in it later. So this isn't the fastest combination in the world, it's a generation old, in fact it's probably two generations old now. For gaming and recording you don't need the latest Uber processor's memory, you don't need to overclock to extremes, you can run an older processor like this and it will work fine. Now to keep those running you need a case, a power supply and some cooling and these are my choices. The case is a Corsair Carbide 500R. Now I picked this because it's got plenty of cooling in it including the massive fan in the side which is really good for cooling your graphics cards but also because I had a 300R before and the liquid cooling that I bought didn't fit into the 300R. But the 500R is designed to take the Corsair Hydro H100 liquid cooler. Now this fits into the top of the case, you can see there's a radiator that goes in the very top of the case then there's two fans that go underneath it and then that block attaches to the processor. So instead of having a big heatsink and a couple of fans attached to your processor you just have that small block. That means that the airflow through the case is a lot better and the radiator is venting all the heat through the top of the case rather than relying on the external fans to push it out of the way. Liquid cooling is a lot quieter than running air cooling because the fans don't run at such high speeds and it's also a lot better for your processor because they run a lot cooler. And if you do want to overclock your processor to extremes you can just turn up the hydro cooling as well. To power everything in the case there's an Aska Venom 1000 watt power supply. Now one thing you really shouldn't skimp on when building a PC is the power supply. Big fancy graphics cards use a lot of power. They have two power connectors into them for a reason. They use a lot of power and if they don't get a good power supply then their performance drops off and it can damage your cards. Also go for a modular power supply not one with fixed cables. That way you can use whatever cables you need and you don't get old legacy cables littering around in your case. Next we come to the storage and apart from the DVD writer which is SATA 2, everything else in here is a SATA 3 6GB drive. I have three SSDs and one normal hard drive. The two main drives in my PC are both by SanDisk. There's a SanDisk Extreme 240GB SSD that has Windows and all my software on it. Then there's a SanDisk X300 512GB SSD and that is what everything is now recorded to. Recording to a fast SSD means you don't get skips in the video caused by stutters in the hard drive writing speeds. When testing using DX Story, the SSDs come in about 420 millibytes per second, whereas the Seagate Barracuda comes in about 160. So the SSDs are a lot faster than the standard hard drives. But for storage for your money, the Seagate Barracudas are very good value. Next we have graphics and audio and both of these have changed recently. In fact the audio card has changed today. So this is a very up to date video. 
My new graphics card which I've shown and tested in a couple of videos is a Zotac GeForce GTX 980 Ti Amp Extreme Edition. So this has got 6GB of GDDR5 memory in it. It's very fast, in fact it's much faster than the two HD 7970s it's replaced. But most importantly, the drivers for it work. Crossfire and SLI still don't have proper drivers that run on every piece of software. So going for a single more powerful card seems to be the way to go. It's certainly not the cheap way to go, but this card will record Battlefield 4 at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and still run the game at 100 FPS. So definitely worth the money in terms of its performance. My new sound card, which arrived today from Amazon, is an Asus Zonar DX 7.1 sound card. I had to replace it because my old sound card, which was an Asus Zonar DGX, stopped working on one side. It would only put sound out on the right-hand channel, not the left-hand channel. In its defence, it had been kicking around in a box for over a year because I couldn't put it in with the two HD 7970s, so I think it probably got bashed while it was living in boxes. So, spent the money, bought a new sound card, fitted it today, and it works. Asus's sound card range is a bit confusing. There's a DSX, a DGX, and a DX. The DSX is 7.1 and designed if you want to listen to surround sound. The DGX is designed for you to listen to on headphones. And the DX is effectively both of those combined. Costs a bit more money, but I thought I'd just blown a ton of money on a graphics card, so I might as well waste some on a slightly better sound card. Next we come to monitors, and I have two Samsung monitors because I've never had one of these go wrong, so when I buy a monitor, it tends to be a Samsung monitor. Now my primary monitor is a Samsung 27 inch 120Hz 3D LED monitor. To be honest, the 3D is pointless, I've never used it, but it was the cheapest 27 inch 120Hz monitor that I could buy at the time, and it works perfectly well. It's probably not a great gaming monitor, it's more designed for multimedia, but it works fine for what I use it for. The 21.5 inch Samsung is a very basic monitor, I bought it really cheap off eBay, and it works great as a secondary monitor. When I'm playing games it'll have things like the recording software or battle log open on the second monitor, or if I'm editing it's probably got some video running that I'm watching at the same time as I'm editing. Now we come to the keyboard and mouse. Now I bought the mouse first, liked it so much that I bought the same company's keyboard to go with it. So I have a Rockat Isku FX keyboard and a Rokat Cone XTD mouse. Now I'd never owned any Rokat gear before, I think they're a German company, but the Rokat Cone XTD is a grown up version of the Razer Death Adder. The Razer Death Adder is essentially a version of Microsoft's IntelliPoint mouse but it's very small in the hand and it's quite flimsy and cheap feeling. The Rokat Cone XTD has the same kind of shape, the same kind of feel, but it's a lot better quality, or it feels a lot better quality. And after I killed my Razer Death Adder within about six months, I decided to try something else and the Rokat Cone XTD is a great mouse. And because the mouse was so good, when my SteelSeries keyboard died, I bought a Rokat Isku keyboard. Now, Controversially, this isn't a mechanical keyboard. All the advice if you're a gamer is buy a mechanical keyboard with cherry black keys because they're great. I hate the feel of them. I just can't type on them and for general use they're awful. So I have bought a non-mechanical keyboard. Now the Isku looks exactly like one of the Rokat mechanical keyboards. They've just taken the mechanical keys off it. So for me, it's pretty much perfect. Plus the keyboard can talk to the mouse and the mouse can talk to the keyboard and they can swap functions. So keyboard keys can become mouse presses, mouse presses can change the effect of keyboard keys. It's all very complicated but fun to play with. Now we get to the sound peripherals. So effectively here we've got two microphones and two headsets but in three devices. So the big shiny microphone is a Samsung CO1U USB Studio Condenser Microphone. That's what I'm recording this voiceover on now, and effectively it is a voiceover microphone. It does struggle when recording gaming because it picks up every noise and every mouse click and every keyboard click in the entire room. 
but for doing voiceovers this is probably one of the best value microphones you can get because it does everything you need to do but it's USB so you don't need an audio interface. You can just plug it in, use the Windows controls and get decent audio quality. The other microphone I use is the Razer Kraken 7.1 Chroma headset mic. Now I thought this was going to remove all the keyboard noise and mouse clicks but it doesn't, it picks those up as well. Not sure how to get rid of them, I've read a load of articles and stuff but I really don't know how to get rid of the keyboard noise. But as a gaming headset the Razer Kraken is great, the 7.1 actually works which it didn't on some of the other headsets I've tried and the microphone quality is pretty good. But in terms of sound quality, these Soundmagic ES20 sound isolating earphones are much better than the Razer headset. These ES20 earphones have won a ton of awards for being the best value headphones you can buy. They're really good quality, they're a really good price, and if you wear glasses they're so much more comfortable than a headset. Right, so that's a more detailed look at everything you saw in this video and a few other things. Hope it explains what I've got and why I've got it. If you do have any questions then leave them in the comments but I'm not a hardware expert, I just buy what seems to be right and what's best value. Thanks for watching.